Well, oh, so you're not talking about fixing the computer, you're, you're talking about cannibalizing it for the power supply. Yeah, and the other parts, uh, the other parts of it also. Get the hard drive out of there and, uh, uh, maybe, the, maybe some of the chips and whatever, the motherboard and whatever, and see if I can sell that to somebody or just put it aside. Okay. I got a bunch of stuff here. I think I got one or two power supplies. You know what I think? My, uh, son had a camper up there in, uh, Brimfield at the campgrounds, uh, 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 Village Green campgrounds, and when the tornado went through, it just destroyed everything. There wasn't a camper left. But, uh, when they, when they scrapped them all out and everything, cleaned the place up, all those campers have a, uh, uh a big, uh, power supply in them. Uh, so when they're hooked up to 12 volts, they can use, uh, I mean, when they're hooked up to 120, they can uh, use 12 volts for various things that are in the camper. Most of them have a power supply, and they also have an inverter. Either way, you can, you know, whatever. But uh, my son gave me a few of those power supplies. Some of them were 30 amp, 35 amp, and even bigger. And uh, he had a tag cell one day. I put them out there in the lawn, and poof, they were gone in no time. Uh, yeah, so those things go fast. Uh, you, know, you know what? I mean, coming up this next spring, uh, we, we definitely have to go up to the fleet at MIT. Um, it's not like it's not like Deerfield. Uh, we said it's not like Deerfield, New Hampshire, but there's a lot of stuff, and uh, you bring any any of that stuff, the old monitors, uh, any of that stuff, and these these guys from MIT are looking for electronic parts all the time, Reset. And, uh, I mean, you won't make, you won't make thousands of dollars, but, you know, you'll, you know, you'll make a couple of bucks and, and uh, instead of throwing the thing in the, in the, in the uh, trash or give it to somebody else that's going to make money. But it's a lot of fun up there. Yeah, I think they have that every week, don't they? And, uh, very, very, uh, Prolific with uh, computer parts and stuff like that, but but all kinds of things. I'm sure it, it's uh, it's an amateur radio club that, that they they have, isn't it? That puts it on. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it is, and uh, they actually have their own repeater. Uh, MIT has their own repeater, and uh, um, yeah, but mostly lots of computer parts. But like I said, it's guys that are looking to to, to find those things for. Uh, for uh, uh, electronic components, uh, uh, we said K one F F K. Yeah, the guys. Uh, a at the time I went up there uh, a few years ago, th this is when uh, those battle bots were real popular, and you know they were always looking for for parts to make up their uh, battle bots. And uh, uh, yeah. We should take a ride down there sometime. I guess they hold it. Uh, they have one every weekend or something. Uh, it's a regular thing down there. And uh, yeah, it sounds like it'd be fun. Uh, two things that uh, I would like to go to the uh, the near fest in the spring, if you want to go. And of course. Uh, I like to go to the end. I don't know where MTA area is going to have it this year. I guess they can't have it at the Turnbull right there. Uh, they're all done there. So I don't know where they're going to have that one. And then I like to go to Nobark. Yeah, yep. Uh, I, I really like that Nobark uh, one. Uh, lots of, uh, you know, it's like, uh, you know, you want jumpers, you want fittings. Uh, it, it was a good place to go to get it. And, uh, they ended up getting a lot of fittings up there and had a really good time there. Anytime you go to those flea markets and stuff, you got to know what does it cost if I order it, <laughs> you know, uh, brand new and sent to me through, uh, you know, through the mail or, uh, or UPS or whatever. What's it going to cost? Because sometimes I've seen stuff at those ham fests where guys had a price tag on them that was more than 
said you could buy it brand new from uh, uh, AES or somewhere. Oh yeah, yeah, you, you, you got to go there. I mean, you know, I, I, I shop around a lot and I, I do a lot of research, so uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with uh, with what they cost, and you know, if something's out of line like that. It's just, you know, eh. that's why when we were up in uh, in Deerfield, we said uh, we walked through those. Uh, um, God, I can't think of the name. Was it Quicksilver? And yeah, we walked through Quicksilver, and geez, they, their their prices were just ridiculous. Yeah, I, I, he's a uh, he's a non-vol kind of a, a guy. I mean, uh, I didn't know that his prices were too too bad. I didn't notice that. I mean, some some stuff maybe, but uh, but. Uh, he doesn't uh, seem to. Uh, uh, what do I? What do I want to say? He doesn't doesn't seem to get along that well with the public or something. I don't know. Right right away, you know, I I said something about a G5 RV antenna. If you remember, remember you were standing right there. He said, "Oh, you might as well use a dummy load." You know, <laughs> if you're trying to sell stuff, don't insult the customer first thing. Yeah, Roger. And uh, you know what? Uh, so far, uh, I gotta say, I've, it's only been a you know a week and a half or so, but I've got a, I'm pretty impressed with the dummy load I have up in the attic because you know <laughs> I'm talking Argentina and France and Germany and Italy and uh, <laughs> geez, it's pretty good for a dummy load. Yes, I believe uh, I read somewhere that it is the most commonly used antenna. For amateur radios, G5 RV, and uh, I mean, he's of the opinion that he didn't like them. But I mean, uh, keep it to yourself. I mean, oh, I mean, oh, I don't know. He can do whatever he wants, I guess. I don't think he was at the Nobart Ham Fest last time. He was the year before, but anyhow. <clears throat> well, I'm going to. Uh, Finish up what I was doing here, and uh, I'll talk to you later if you're going to be around. I'll be in here again at 1 o'clock. I haven't found Bruce yet. Yeah, what happened? What, did he just drop off the face of the earth here, or what? I don't know. His audio was so low on that HD, I, I, I thought, and I told him, I said, you know, you get the manual and look, because I think you... you uh, uh, Move the settings so you got it on real, real low. His, his uh, signal strength seemed to be fine, but his audio was just down in the bunk dumps. Everybody was saying, I can't hear you, I can't hear you. you know? So then he asked me. And every once in a while, if he had to go somewhere or something, he was going to be gone, you know, for a day or two, he'd uh, ask me to take over. And I did. So that day, <laughs> that last day that he was on the net, he said, uh, would you take the net until I can find out, you know, what's the story here or get this repaired or whatever? I said, yeah, I'll do it. Uh, that was uh, at least two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago. And uh, <clears throat> like the next day, he was in there very softly, and uh, we were having a discussion. I said, maybe you've, uh, you know, hit the menu button or something and, uh, and lowered your audio. you you got to look in the manual so. That was the last time I heard him. <laughs> I haven't heard him since. I don't know where he went. Maybe he said, hey, this is a pretty good deal. I'm not going to get in here at all. I heard KB, and I think it was Mario.
out. You're just not holding it there. Um, I'm here talking with Rich. I don't know if Rich can uh, can uh, hit the East Heartland. You want to go to East Heartland? I'm